and the day of reveals just keeps on going. So we got the reveals over here at the Gamma Con or Game Manufacturers Association going down. Um, so let's take a look at what we got. And there's actually quite a few different things coming. So for one, if you've been playing Necromunda, which I still haven't gotten into yet, I really want to. Um, but uh, just recently, we did get House of Chains with House of Goliath coming with that. This we're going to be getting House of Blades and with that being House Escher. Now that's going to give us our um, badass little uh, female heroines here. Um, looking quite exotic in all of their many uh, different uh, uh, under five goings on. Um, we'll see how this pans out. I don't really know a ton about Necromunda to be able to speak about what these guys, or I guess girls, might. Oh, dude, look at those six pack on this one. Um, might be actually um, set up as, and I know a lot of them have to do either with really good range capabilities, but not as great melee capabilities, or really good range capabilities, but at a shorter range. Like, you have all these interesting caveats with Necromunda, and I think that it's a game definitely worth getting into if you like the kind of nuanced breakdown of the Warhammer 40,000 system and a different approach to it, too. I mean, with, with Necromunda, you get a game that is very... Um... Again, just to reuse a word, nuance, you know, you do stuff very similar to the way you do with um, Kill Team. Like if you're thinking of it as Warhammer 40k, um, its battlegrounds are somewhat macro. Then you get a little bit more micro when you take a look at Kill Team, but you're still using essentially the same rules as 8th edition. Um, but then when you jump into Necromunda, you get a whole different set of rules. Um, you actually have things level up much in the same way as you did Mordheim. So you get a system that is, a, it harkens back to a really old style of RPG style strategy that Games Workshop used to really do a lot of, right? Mordheim used to be a very big center portion of their game in the fourth and third editions of Warhammer Fantasy, or actually fourth, fifth, and sixth around then. Um, and then Necromunda itself used to be a pretty big one of 40k for at least a couple years. And they've brought it back in a big way, and I think a lot of people really like Necromunda. So it's exciting to see more expansions on that. We also get some uh, some phalanxes, uh, phalan ph phalanxes, these little guys right there, <laughs> known as phalanxes. These cat-like monstrosities are cracking for bringing down rival gangers. So a lot of fun additions with a whole new House of Blades being added to Necromunda. Now also with Warhammer Underworld, we get a new gang as well, the Daughters of Kang. Cain, I actually had not a gang, I guess. I suppose it's more of a war band or a little um, tribe of sorts. So we got Beastgrave not too long ago, and now we're going to be getting the Daughters of Cain added into Warhammer Underworlds. And if you've not played Warhammer Underworlds, um, I think it's a really great way to get into Age of Sigmar with a very low barrier of entry. You're, you're dealing with five to maybe ten models if you're really going with something um, that's very model heavy, like something like the, um, the Borrow Legion, the Undead. Um, but on the on the, if you want to go real, real, real small model size, you can go Stormcast, and they have like three or four models for their um, actual warbands. So Warhammer Underworlds is a really great way to get into the game with a very smaller condensed rule set, and it allows you to pick up models or use models that you can then just use in Age of Sigmar. So if you're already playing Daughters of Cain, you can use some of these models already, or if you already have their versions in your army, you can just port them on into Underworlds. So we'll be seeing that coming as well here. Uh, those will be called the Mar Morgwaith's Blood Coven, Blade Coven. Um, we'll also be getting a preview on those cards coming here pretty soon. Now, moving down more, we're also going to be getting a further increase here um, with some knights. Now, this is for Adeptus Titanicus, not for Warhammer 40k. This is the, the side game of Titanicus in which you're dealing with a smaller scale knight. Now, this is going to be adding the knight Acheron as well as knight Castigator. So these guys are going to be coming into the four. And I personally have not even seen a game of Titanicus played yet, so I don't really know the rule sets. I have no idea at all what this game is like. Um, I, I think that the kind of the coolest selling point of this is that you can play or you can use and paint and assemble knights on a much smaller scale. So you don't have to deal with a huge model that has a much higher bear of entry cost wise. And you're dealing with a model, you know, a whole set of models that are smaller, easier to paint, but you still get that really cool knight aesthetic that you would get from the larger, more hundred dollar plus <laughs> at, at the bare minimum. Uh, knights in on the tabletop of course there's stuff like armagers and they're kind of around the same size or scale as armagers if you want to think of something um, comparable at least but here's uh, Adeptus Tit Titanicus getting its new addition as well as the defense of Ryza another supplement that's going to be uh, joining it as well 
Uh, the next campaign book for Adeptus Arcanicus, you have a chance to forge your own Legios or master a legendary one from the background. Discover more epic Titan battles from the Horus Heresy. Declare your loyalty or harness new battle standards for your knight household. So, a whole bunch of new stuff coming with this campaign book coming out here um, from Warhammer uh, Adeptus Titanicus. Now, you can only imagine the one thing I'm probably the most excited for in this reveal, and that is the Lumineth Realm Lords. Yet again, we get another teaser of their units, and this time it's the Aurelin Sentinels. Uh, these were talked about in the second Lumineth Lowdown and in the first one a little bit. So we're finally seeing the models here. We can we can see they're they're pretty awesome. We get a lot of um, aesthetics of uh, very similar to uh, the Greeks going on with their helmets yet again. Um, these nice, really awesome, big, if you take a look here, like these really cool stylized, either that's supposed to be metal or leather. I'm not really sure where they're going with it on it. But it looks really, really awesome. I, I, I love, again, the aesthetic. And one thing we'll talk about the Luminous Lowdown is how they're doing the models for this. I'll be going over the Luminous, Luminous Lowdown tomorrow because uh, I just don't want to swarm you guys with all these, uh, these release videos all at once. I think this is more important to get out since it's such fresh, hot news. I want to get it out to you guys ASAP. Now, my one gripe I'd say with these models is they kind of fit into the same thing that the Stormcast does with their archers. It's all pretty much the same cast and mold. So when I think about painting these guys, I'm going to be like, all right, well, I'm painting, what, two, four, six, eight, nine characters that look almost exactly the same. Maybe slight deviations in their helmets. Their bows seem to be a little bit different here and there. But for the most part, these guys are not in any way st um, um, statically changing from model to model. So I think that's kind of the biggest downside on them. They're, they're probably going to be on an on a easy-to-build type platform where there is just like two or three pieces. Um, so that is kind of annoying. I think it's not sequiturs. I can't remember the actual Stormcast Eternals that are the bow and arrow dudes. So... That is, again, a little disappointing, but again, I'm stoked just to see High Elves brought back into this game. Lumineth Realm Lords are very different and very, uh, I want to say exotic, with the way that they're a whole, um, they're kind of like the equivalent of Eldar Soul Gems and how they work and how it kind of traps their emotions. And we'll talk about that again in the Lumineth Lowdown. But we also have the new mage, the Aerolith Stone Mage. This was, again, teased in the Lumineth Lowdown. We just saw the top portion of it. And the description here really wants you to kind of take a look about look at how the design of this model is done and how it's pretty much all very like tediously balanced. Like if you take a look at this, there's such small little portions of this that are from a modeling standpoint, amazing, a sculpting standpoint, incredible. Now, when I think of this from a Warhammer transportation, want to play a game standpoint, I am terrified of this model. Like I feel if I sneeze hard enough, that guy's just going to come rolling off of his plinth. So we'll see how the actual construction of this is. Maybe the cape is actually attached back here and it adds a little bit more stability. Uh, with all this new wave of models that have come out in the past two or three years, we have some really awesome, amazing, minute detail. But I think with that, we also sacrifice the stability of a lot of models in transporting them from A to B. When you take a look at a lot, a lot of the other bigger Primarchs, right? When you look at Magnus, right? Or, or um, the Death Guard. Uh, those guys have these big, huge pieces that could easily break off. And it's the same thing, too, if you look at a lot of the Stormcasts um, with all their dudes with the, uh, the awesome, like, angelic wings. Um, they're huge, awkward pieces at the same time that don't fit into a standard Games Workshop case. So... This guy will be interesting to see how you deal with transporting him, uh, but at the same time, I'm just really excited to see more High Elves. We've seen a lot of Teclian High Elves, though, so I'm hopefully we're going to get some more Tyrionic ones in the um, days, weeks, months to come. Now, to close out our video here, let's talk about this little teaser. Now, we know our next uh, Psychic Awakening is Engine Kill, so this might not actually be in Engine Kill. Engine Kill looks like it's going to be focusing more on the Knights, on the Mechanicus, and so on and so forth. But what are the evil factions in Engine Kill? And they're kind of teasing here that saying just who or what is the spider. We're sure you might have some ideas. If you haven't guessed it, here's his top assistant as a clue. So you have um, a lot of interesting things going on with this picture. Of course, to me, this makes absolute sense that it's Fabius Bile. 
Um, this is the only person I would imagine to look exactly like this. And if he was nicknamed the spider, it would make a lot of sense. He's got all of his little uh, assistant or uh, little helper portions plugged into his backpack that give him these extra appendages, if you want to call them that, above his head. And tools, stitched together faces, uh, a fleshy pus pack back. Uh, yeah, that, that, this is Fabius Bile for sure. And we've already heard so much about the Emperor's children, about Fulgrim. So maybe this is the grand kind of ending to the Psychic Awakening where we see Fulgrim come back into the fold. I'll be doing a video on that here in, in time to come. But it's interesting here that we've got the the assistant of the spider, which is, again, I think Fabius Bile. It says, uh, let us know who you you think this is on the Warhammer 40k page? And I took a look at what people thought on the Facebook page, and majority of everyone was saying, oh, nice, Fabius Bile. <laughs> so I, I think that that is a, a big, a big uh, uh, obvious thing there. Um, but there's an interesting thing about this, this picture here. Uh, this is a Primaris being extracted, having his um, gene seed extracted. Now, we know Fabius Bile is all about tinkering with things and replicating things and cloning stuff, like he's tried to do to Primarchs. So maybe we're going to see something along the lines of a Chaos Primaris from this. Maybe this is that kind of hint or some sort of um, suggestion that they're, he's trying to take the glands, um, the three or five, three or four special Primaris glands from the Primaris to, again, create his own Chaos Space Marine Primaris. I'm very interested to see where this progresses. I think, though, that at the same time, that's a very awkward thing to do with a Chaos Space Marine multi-part kit that is so fresh, right? It came out, what, just in October? So if we did get Chaos Space Marine Primaris, or Primaris Chaos Space Marines, it would be kind of redundant in a terrible way. Like, we would get this beautiful multi-part kit from Chaos Space Marines that are all of a sudden just not as pertinent because everyone's going to want to jump onto the multi-wound uh, profile of a Primaris, especially if you're a Chaos Space Marine. Um, it's kind of, that's the big shtick with space, Chaos Space Marines is that they're not great as far as um, what you can bring in the roster to fill out your troop choices. So they kind of get left to the wayside. So we'll see if this maybe leads to something Primaris. Hopefully not. That's the whole thing with Primaris. They can't fall to Chaos, but there's nothing to, that, there's nothing to say that they cannot be created by agents of Chaos, which are pretty much just trying to create their own um, Rubicon Primaris. But we'll see how that kind of progresses in the weeks and months to come. And then lastly, of course, we do have Adepticon just around the corner in a uh, whopping, what, like 16 days from now? So we'll see some big, huge stuff coming with Adepticon and hopefully some more news on Warhammer 40k, some more Lumineth lowdown action coming from Age of Sigmar, as well as I'd like to see some more Underworlds and um, some more Necromunda gangs. I think they're pretty awesome to see. So we'll see what happens in the next couple days. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that action, and go ahead and let me know what you're most excited about coming in either this reveal or at Adepticon. But again, guys, thank you one more time. Have a good one and take care.